two, microphone check one, two. Happy, happy, happy new year. We want to welcome you to a new video. Um, it's been uh, long since we did a video, but we are back. Uh, it's a new year, we have to bring you a series of new videos. So remember, we are situated at the junction of Lutuli Avenue and Kamai Road. You can pop in, come uh, uh, check us out to see what we have. We have an amazing, amazing, amazing uh, items on sale. Uh, good prices, original products, and it's going to be an amazing, amazing experience. For those who have not subscribed to our video, uh, to our YouTube channel, remember to subscribe, like a video, comment on our on our many videos that we have already posted, and it's going to be amazing, amazing. So today we want to do yet another video. Um, we're going to do a video that was requested by one of the subscribers. They wanted us to do a video on feedback destroying or eliminating feedback or things to do so that we can be able to eliminate feedback. So without further ado, let's get straight into the video and we start by explaining what feedback is or what echo is, what causes the feedback and how we can eliminate the feedback, all right? So this is what happens, eh? For instance, uh, today I'm using a microphone, I'm using a, a Behringer microphone, it's wired microphone and it's on sale as well, goes for 3,500, but that's beyond the point. So this microphone that I'm using is connected from our mixer right over here. So this is the mixer that we are using to to signal in our microphone. Then uh, the signal goes into the equalizer and then it, uh, it, uh, it uh, going to, into the amplifier. Then the amplifier feeds the speakers, okay? So the two speakers that are right over here, those two, the JBL and the RCF. And then I'm also having some two monitors that are coming uh, to feed me uh, from where I'm standing. So where does feedback come from? When I'm speaking, the signal flows from the mixer, actually from the microphone, sorry, into the mixer or into the sound system. So if by any chance you have signal again coming from, from the speaker into the microphone, Okay, so the first signal is supposed to come from the microphone to the system, to the speakers, then feeding the audience. But if by any mistake, the signal comes back now again from the speaker into the microphone. So when the two signals will meet, they'll cause a feedback. So the signal that I'm, I'll be talking about or the one that will be going and the one that will be coming again now from the microphone into the speaker. So when they meet, they cause a feedback. And that brings a very weird sound um, I'm sure most of you have heard about uh, feedback, the tree sound, that's what we call feedback, all right? So that is what exactly we want to talk about today and how we can be able to eliminate that. So I'll talk about five points after that will be done, all right? So number one is the position of your main speakers or your house speakers. The distance between whoever is speaking or the distance between the stage where most of the microphone activities are taking place and the main speakers all right so mine because i'm using i have a small stage i've put them as close as possible but I'm, i'll show you one thing that i've done i am stepping right behind the speakers so these are good positioning for people who have small stages or small churches or uh, small platforms where they perform their art so you can make sure always make sure that the speakers your main speakers are in front of you okay so this is what happens when i speak and the volume or the sound goes into the speaker the speaker is feeding the audience and the sound is going if you can show them all like the other side our door is open so the sound when the sound is going there's no way it's going to come back because there's no place where it's going to hit and come back so this is very good this is very advisable stand behind your speakers but the best position to do is to place them far away, as far away as possible as you can. So the two speakers are supposed to be on the farthest end, the farthest corner. This one is supposed to be on the farthest corner. All right. So put your main speakers or your house speakers as far ahead of you as possible or in front of you as far as possible. All right. That's point number one. Then we go to point number two. We'll talk about the monitors. 
So today I'm also using an uh, EV monitor. They are both passive monitors. So we have 12 inch and 15 inch. And uh, now when we talk about monitors again, it's the opposite of the, of the house speakers. Put your monitors close or closest to the, uh, whoever is using the microphone as possible. So put them so close so that you don't have to bump a lot of volume to feed whoever is speaking into the microphone. So place them as closest as possible. The reason why we will not feel any feedback coming from these speakers, first of all, it's because of their design. They are designed in a way that is not facing whoever is talking directly, all right? So we are able to hear ourselves from these speakers, but there's no way the microphone will go back because I'll talk about that probably in the point number three or point number four. The microphone is facing this direction. So when you have the monitors placed correctly, very close, you will minimize the volume of the amplifier. So you will have minimal voice coming out of the monitors, all right? And uh, that is our point number one. Actually, point number two. On point number two, if you still have problems with your monitors, there is a new way of, uh, actually it's not new, but it's not very common probably in our, in our, in most places. But there is an issue or, or there is something called in-ear monitors. They look like headphones, but they are very powerful, a bit expensive. We have a brand called Marshall, but we have others uh, coming um, in sale very soon. You can um, alternate that with your monitors. Use in-ear monitors. Those ones will be very close to your ears. There is no way you are going to feel any feedback if you are using in-ear monitors. So you can give that to your band, to your vocalist as well. They just use earphones or the in-ear monitors and now you will have eliminated your monitors that is if you don't uh, you need them number one or if your stage is small or if you are having feedback issues from your monitors that's point number two then we go to point number three and that is the type of microphone that you are using there are different microphones in the market that you will find and they are different uh, abilities and capabilities and they are designed different to perform different tasks in a particular way, all right? So the microphone that I'm using right now is called a cardioid microphone. The best from this category is the SF58, the Shure SF58. Most people love them because they are cardioid microphones, that's number one. Number two is because the frequencies that they produce are very friendly. They're not very loud, they are very calm, very much collected, so they will not produce a lot of, a, a lot of noise or a lot of, uh, the, the picking is not that high, but today I'm using a Behringer because I'm doing a solo project. There are no um, backups and stuff, so I'm using this one because it's loud enough and uh, it's still a cardioid microphone. So what cardioid microphones do, I'll show you, come close Alex. So cardioid microphones from this angle, they'll only be able to pick your voice from here. So from this ring, that's where you get. So you realize when I turn it like this, all the voice is gone, you can't hear me. And if you can't, you're probably hearing me from there, from this camera, all right? But if I do them like this again, the voice is back. So these are very good because, for instance, when you have our monitors right over here, there's no way this sound is going to come back and hit here. If it hits here, it's a dead end, all right? So it has to come and, and uh, be on the top of the, of, the, of the cartridge. That is point number three. Be specific on the type of mic that you want. If you can, especially for the band, make sure you get cardioid microphone. There are churches like the Catholic churches, at times the ACK churches will prefer using condenser microphone because of their big coils. That one is not bad, but it's very tricky, especially if the speakers are not far away at the corner. So what happens with the condenser microphone? Normally they have a big, big diaphragm, right? So we have some here, Alex, you can show them. All these are condenser microphones. They have a very big diaphragm. They are normally used in, in uh, studios to do podcasts. And uh, normally in such, uh, in such places, the soundproofing is always and almost very much perfect. So if you can't avoid them, use cardioid microphones. All right? That is our point number three. Then you go to point number four, which is very important. 
in your setup actually we could have started with this one but i did this one purpose melissa wants to pass just pass that is melissa for you ah uh, yeah there she goes uh, <laughs> so our point number four i could have started with this one but i opted not to start with it because it's uh it's a bit technical so i'll get straight into the mixer and before i do that you will allow me to turn the speakers like this a bit because yeah, we don't want to to get feedback on, on, on purpose so i'll turn them like this and i think that should be perfect so i'll come close to the mixer this is the mixer we are using today it's a soundcraft uh signature 16. i think in most of our series we use this one and uh, you can see this my these are the, the parameters that you set we have our gain zero i've done zero gain okay uh, it's completely turned off so this one is a major major boost when you're using your microphones if you have your gain make sure anytime okay you have it at zero then you can lift the 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 volume slider up to whatever you want as long as it's below the zero db mark this is a zero db mark just make sure it's on zero db or less then come to your means this is your mean this is your master volume again make sure it's on zero so if the sound is not enough and probably in your amplifier you you've, you've done maximum volumes beyond probably is, uh, zero db ours is uh, at uh, noon okay that uh, that's at the center the volumes are set at the center and the equalizers will not have overdone anything so make sure your parameters especially your gain is on zero then don't overdo the highs the mids and the lows all right it's always a perfect setting to do them at at the middle at zero dbs at the middle right at the middle you have very clean sound but this one is dependent on the voice of the person who is using the microphone sometimes you have to boost a bit of highs also dependent on the type of speaker that you are using you can be able to boost a few frequencies as you feel them so make sure the gain is on the lowest possible if you need to add it add it only when necessary so our signal there is a way actually that was just by the way but there's a way you can give feedback with the equalizer the equalizer has two functions i think we have started this one earlier an equalizer can boost a signal but it can also reduce a frequency i hope you get that one correctly it's able to boost a signal okay so when you have a small signal coming from the mixer going to the equalizer then to the amplifier you can boost a small signal to make it very sweet below the equalizer but today we want to talk about its ability to reduce our frequency all right so what frequency are we talking about remember all these and let's show them all these are what we call frequencies last time we said these are low frequencies these are mid frequencies and these are high frequencies now this is something that all of us should know okay that um yes after all very good um this is alex alex is our camera guy today so i'm still uh, teaching him uh, one or two things now remember when you're using the equalizer there are frequencies that are called notorious frequencies i have personally mastered them but there's a way the next step probably in our uh, video i'll uh, recommend a video i'll recommend an application that is found on uh, play store that you can use actually we'll do that on as a, as a different video but today i'll show you what you can do to know the notorious frequencies you can lift up the gains when you are when you are setting your setup eh? just put the gains as crazy as you want it's very high not not so high but just put them high and then you will realize that there are frequencies over here that are really uh, that are very fast in corresponding to the to the voice or they react very fast they'll pick up very fast i'll just show you them this is one of them the 4k is the notorious frequency for the equalizer so you can reduce this one and then you start very high chances of not having frequency there's an 8k very frequent uh course for the feedback there's a 1k and a 2k i think there's 2k 2k 4k 8k these are the most notorious frequencies that we always have you um having feedback issues but there are many others that are found on the equalizer so there's a concept that we use to reduce them the most notorious that's when you're supposed to lift them up all you just lift them up all until you 
think some 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 uh, so you can hear from the Nini the the Nini is uh, the volume is coming up. So once we start to realize the feed, the feedback, so let me just do it practically. I'll make sure it's not as loud because I don't like it. So it's becoming very loud. I'm increasing the volume very loud. I'm just waiting for that moment. There we go. So that is the feedback we're talking about. That one, let me put it again. So we are almost there. So we can reduce number four very fast. Number eight, where is it? It's here, eight. It's uh, here, four. Then we have the two and our feedback is gone. Okay, so our feedback is gone. Same position. You can see, Alex, you can check me here. Same position, but the feedback has gone because I've reduced the eight, the four and the two. All right, that is a simple way. You can always kill them as as you, if you have time, yeah? but if you don't have time, just do um, uh, just do the eight, four, and two. So that is it. Reduce those frequencies that are have a tendency of uh, producing producing the, the feedbacks. Okay, and then add to our last point uh, that is uh, setting up the mix and the equalizer very well. Then there's something called the acoustics. This one is an advice specifically to churches that have already uh, done very big churches uh, with uh, very big volumes on top, especially Catholic churches. We've had many problems. We have had many um, clients coming to to seek for advice on how we can help them reduce echo from their churches. At times we can do all this and still have the feedbacks and the echoes. So these are not ways that most of the churches can do is uh, to incorporate as many acoustics on the walls as possible all right so have as many acoustics on the wall as possible to avoid the hard walls especially on churches eh? when you have a wall that is cemented it's a cemented it's a tough wall you have a light there's a very high uh, likeliness that the feedback will always disturb you so you can have as many acoustics you can have drawings and not literal drawings uh, paintings that are on wooden blocks you can have a uh, form acoustic the mattress of um, acoustic you can do any form of distractions that are going to distract there yeah? the feedback of uh, whenever it comes whenever it hits the wall not to come back so have as many acoustics on the wall as possible that is going to be a beautiful beautiful thing the last point is uh, people who use guitars people who use microphones the position of the microphone is a factor because if you speak too loudly from the microphone the volume becomes very high okay so if your amplifier like ours we've set to the very low points if it was on higher higher volumes yeah there is a point guy there if you have if you have um very, volumes very high you are likely to have feedback or you're likely to have feedback especially if the volumes if you are doing guitars, the volume of the, the knob, the volume knobs on the guitars, if they are too high, you are likely to have feedback. So reduce those volumes, make them probably at uh, less than uh, zero dB, okay, half points or less than half points, then just boost your signals from the mixer, right? So have your volumes from whatever, from, um, from music, from microphone, from guitars, from any other instrument that you are able to reduce the volumes reduce the volumes from the main sources add the volumes from the sliders avoid the gains and every other thing that you have talked about so these are the six main things that you can do to reduce the feedback and that is it for our video today i uh, remember again this is our favorite shop decibel audio kenya we are glad it's a new year happy new year again and from all of us you can show all of all these people it's a bye bye and that's Jay, that is uh, Rose, that is uh, Lucy, that is Melissa looking away. We have Rando and we have Bamu taking porridge. Then we have Kibuva looking away as well. Kibuva is our main guy from Mombasa. Yes, that's, our, that's our new not our new member, that's a guy from Mombasa. We have a shop at Mombasa. And that is basically then we have Wanga. Wanga is there. Wanga say hi. Uh, that is Wanga, that is uh, Wanga from our another branch from River Road. So that is basically it. We are done with that video. 
thank you for watching remember to subscribe for more amazing details and uh, very informative uh, videos and it's a wrap so it's a bye bye till we see you in our next and this is alex let me take alex that is alex that was the guy who was taking i hope i'm seeing you that's the guy who was uh, taking the video so it is basically a wrap till we see you next time bye bye